Bonjour et bienvenue Hello sur les and welcome de to France 24 and RFI Radio. We have with us a Louise Mushikawabo, former Minister for Foreign Affairs for Rwanda and current Secretary General of La Francophonie. We have Christophe Boyce. Bouvier, Madame la well. Secrétaire Générale, bonjour. Secrétaire Générale, hello. Bonjour. Hello. Madame la Secrétaire Générale, Madame Secretary General, the COVID virus has not yet hit the African continent with its full brunt, but what we do know is that the economic crisis is already taking up root. So what are your fears? Do you fear economic crisis throughout the continent? And my second question is, what can la francophonie do to mitigate the economic fallout? Well, the, the francophone world and the world at large, and that includes Africa, uh, was really hard hit by this pandemic. Uh, first of all, from a health point of view, and then quite clearly uh, from an economic point of view. But Africa can't be singled out. Uh, if you look at the forecast published by the IFIs, uh, if you look at statements made by the governor of the French Central Bank today, who was saying that the French economy is running on two-thirds of the cylinders. Uh, Okay, but Africa so far hasn't been as uh, massively hit as have Europe and the U.S. But Africa has also been extremely cautious ever since the crisis started. Practically all countries on the African continent adopted measures to limit the spread of the disease. And, uh, in light of the vulnerabilities of a number of uh, economies in Africa, because uh, there are huge variations between countries there, we're sure that at the end of this crisis, there will be a lot of damage to contend with. And what can La Francophonie do? Well, Francophonie uh, came in uh, with uh, its means uh, from day one. Uh, very early on, we put a number of educational materials online in French, uh, targeting uh, those children who were currently not able to go to school. But it's quite clear that in our countries, a number of these uh, young people don't have internet connections. So we're looking into this with a number of other people. Players. Our uh, educational institute, the IFEF, based in Dakar, uh, and uh, with the Agency for University Studies and the ministers of the Francophonie to try to find another way to give these people access, uh, maybe on using radio waves or some other means. Last week, the G20 countries accorded a one-year moratorium on debt repayments for African states. And you co-signed an open letter with another eminent personality, and you said it's a good start, but more needs to be done. At the same time, Macron and Macky Sall have called for all debt to be written off entirely. But is that even possible or realistic, given that most of the debt is held up by China? Well, first of all, as regards the debt write-off, uh, um, personally, with this uh, team of other uh, economists, who some are really very well known in the field of international finance, uh, I would rather be in favor of a debt freeze, a moratorium on debt, because Africa, just like other countries, needs both the space and the time, first of all, to address the health issue of the pandemic, and then uh, to put 
uh, its various economies back on track. In other words, Africa is not demanding any special treatment. Africa, just like other countries here in Europe, has adopted a number of uh, very strong measures, has changed legislation to manage uh, the crisis and help the economies get back on track afterwards. So for us, what's important is a freeze on debt. Uh, that's what we published in this open letter. Because first of all, uh, there's more to be done. In terms of space, first of all, uh, the, for the time being, the freeze doesn't cover all countries. And it needs to, to really be applicable to all countries, because there is no discrimination possible. Uh, and then uh, the freeze so far has been decided to go to be valid until the end of 2020, whereas we would like it to be extended till the end of next year, 2021. And then we also need to have very frank exchanges on uh, the future of the private sector in Africa. You know that a number of countries have adopted measures to make sure that businesses, uh, small and large, uh, uh, don't get swept away, and we need that in Africa as well. This is something uh, that's also very important from an employment point of view. Uh, today, a lot of Africans working in the informal sector are without a job, and this is another issue that we would really like to see addressed by everybody. So, Madam Secretary General, some 10 days ago, there was images that came out of Guangzhou in China. China, where a number of African citizens were seen kicked out of their home, beaten. What were your thoughts in reaction to that? Well, uh, those uh, shots were really very shocking. I've been following the whole issue very closely. I know the very privileged relations that exist between China and the African continent. And the heads of state of the African Union at the commission level under the aegis of Cyril Ramaphosa, who is currently chairing the African Union, uh, contacted Chinese authorities right away. Uh, we in Africa hope uh, that this is not uh, something that's going to become a trend, that it's only an exception, a blip, uh, due to the actions of an, maybe some tradesmen uh, from China. But Africa can certainly not uh, tolerate seeing its businessmen, its students uh, uh, treated in such a manner. Madam Secretary General, I would just like to take this conversation back to La Francophonie. I, on the 17th of February in Rwanda, Kizito Mihugo, an artist, died in prison. Officially, it was a suicide, but there is suspicions around the actual events. And if we take this back to the declaration in November of 2000 for La Francophonie, it says that you are to protect human rights. Then in October 2018, you were appointed the Secretary General. And some say that this came following the liberation of the artist, Kaziku Mihigo. But does not the recent death in prison, does it not put you in a difficult situation, especially in light of one of the major promises of your organization? Well, uh, let's not blow this out of all proportion. First of all, I'd like to set the record straight. Uh, uh, maybe RFI feels differently about this, but my election had nothing to do with the freeing of that young man. He was freed along with uh, hundreds, maybe two or three hundred other uh, people who had been detained. Uh, it's a pleasant coincidence, but that's it. I know uh, this whole uh, business. I've been following it. I had met the young man in question in my previous job. What surprised me, however, is the idea that uh, somebody committing suicide 
suicide is necessarily something fishy if it happens in Rwanda. I may be answering your question as a Rwanda citizen, and then I'll answer as a Secretary General of the Francophonie. But they're certainly part of the media and the print media in our region, in our country, that will at some point in time have to acknowledge the fact that some people in Rwanda do die of natural death, uh, do commit suicide. Uh, I've heard of a number of suicides uh, uh, since the beginning of the year in Rwanda, and on each and every occasion, people were trying to see whether the government wasn't involved, and this is something that really has to be corrected at some point in time. Now, as regards the francophonie, uh, issues of rights, uh, rights for individuals, the right to dignity, are things that we value tremendously. Uh, these are valued in Rwanda, they're valued by our organization. And we're remaining uh, very vi vigilant, and I'm sure that if we were to look at exactly what's going on in all of our member states, we would probably find things. I was addressed on this same topic by some of your colleagues from TV Cinq Monde a few weeks ago. And uh, in light of their questions, I went and tried to investigate uh, the situation here in France. And I came to realize that a couple of years ago in France, uh, there were about 130 suicides in jail here in France. So I don't, Rwanda can't uh, necessarily be judged in this way, but we are uh, keeping these matters in mind very closely. Madam Secretary General, thank you very much for your time. And thank you all for tuning in to RFI Radio and France 24. At a time when most of humanity is confined because of COVID-19, France 24, more than ever before, is your window onto the world. Liberté, égalité, actualité.